Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Daggett and today is phase four. This is the final lesson on drawing our koi fish design. We're finally up to color. So if you've stuck with me through the process, we've done an outline, we've outlined the background, and then we've lined and shaded our design. And now it's ready for color. So let's jump into today's video by going to the overhead. Okay guys, so welcome back to the table. We are at phase four and this is the coloring phase of our completed piece of artwork. So as you can see, I've got here the koi fish painting that we started in last week's lesson, or we started painting it in last week's lesson. We started drawing it uh, in the two previous lessons to that. You can find them in the link in the description down below. And today we're gonna to be working on color. So I'd like to remind you all that you don't have to use the medium that I'm using. If you're comfortable using the Ecoline uh, brush pens that we've used in all the previous videos, you can go ahead and use those. Or if you want to use colored pencils, watercolor paints, whatever you have, you can still follow along with my tutorial as best as possible. And just know the strengths and, and weaknesses of your mediums and what you're using so that you know how to complete this artwork and still follow along. So I'll be using a slightly larger palette. I've got the same two brushes that I had last time, the blending brush and the ink brush. I've got my glass of water here for blending the colors. And I've got the colors here, so I'm going to run you through the colors very quickly. I'm assuming not everyone has the Ecoline, uh, sorry, the Liquitex acrylic inks. So I'm going to go through them very quickly, but just keep in mind you can use any equivalent colors that you've got. So we're using a titanium white in the Liquitex inks a pyrrole red, an orange yellow, or yellow orange I should say. We're using, uh, it's a thalassine blue, so it's a thalo blue. This one here is dioxazine purple. Uh, I think it's the only purple that I've found they've made, so. And then we've also got sap green permanent. So this is just like a nice dark green. I do also have a phthalo green and you can use that. I just sort of like the tone that the sap green has. And I've also got my little diluting water bottle. Like I said last time, you can just drip a little bit of water from the tap. I just like to use this for convenience sake. So to start painting this one, we're going to start with our phthalo blue. And I tend to use the same well uh, as much as possible when using these colors because they, they don't uh, sort of reactivate too badly but you know occasionally even if you've washed your palette nicely some of the ink residue is still on there and it might mix with your colors uh, as you blend them in the palette so I try to avoid that as much as possible okay so I guess the first thing we're going to cover today is painting the head of the koi fish so what you're going to want to do is take your ink brush and we're going to start on this side of the head you're also going to want to pre-wet about halfway up this side of the head so just take your blending brush dip it in some water and just pre-moisten the paper on this side. Just like that. Now you're gonna take your ink brush, get a nice amount of blue ink on your ink brush, and you're gonna start off that line that we did down the center. And you're gonna paint up towards that wet spot that we just laid down. And then take your water brush and you're going to blend it up to the edge but you're going to leave a little white border and you'll notice we do this a lot it's very common in traditional japanese style designs to leave that little white edge and so we are going to go ahead and do that with this design as well okay so you're going to do a very similar thing on this side but you are going to have to work just a little bit quicker you're going to basically take your water brush and mark out a line about here. You're also gonna do one with some water just above your eye area here. Now we take our blue. Make sure you load your brush up heavily, just twist it around in the ink. Start at the very back of the head here and we just work our way forwards. Take your blending brush. And we're just going to blend that up to our line, making sure to leave that little white gap. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and paint the side of the head here. And we're, we're pretty much going to do that with uh, the same technique that we did the rest of our head at the top there. We're basically going to moisten around this area here. Just wet the paper a little bit. And we'll do a, the darkest sort of area from the bottom of the head. Still leaving that white gap. Bring it up to where we just wet the paper. And then take our blending brush. And bring that blue up and around. Again, just making sure you're always leaving that little white edge. You're going to do the same thing coming around this eye bit here. I just moistened the paper a little bit. Get a bit of blue on my brush. And do the underside of the eye. And then just blend that right up and around the eye, making sure to leave our little border. We'll take our blue ink right across the bottom of the head, just leaving our white gap along the bottom. Take our blending brush, use the lips to dry out the moisture, and just gently blend that up. You are going to want to blend a little bit forward into our whiskers here. So just take a bit of that blue, blend it forward, and just try to leave as much of a white border on these as you can. So I tend not to add too much color to them, just a little bit of indication of color coming out. And you can dip into your blue a little bit here to do the other whiskers. It's very similar to painting with watercolor paints. Uh, the benefit of the acrylic inks is once they dry, they're set. So they, they won't reactivate on you. And that's uh, sort of the, the main benefit to it. Whereas watercolor paints, you, you tend to have to work lightest to darkest. Otherwise the colors will blend into each other and look muddy. In this case, I can go straight over the top of my blacks and my grays. And I don't have to stress at all really about uh, muddying the colors up with the black and grays that are underneath and it, it allows for really good layering. Okay, take your water, uh, your water brush, and add a line of water about halfway up the lip, or halfway up the top part of the lip here. And take a little bit of blue, and we're gonna saturate in this bottom area of the lip up to that line. might actually do the one side first because it is a bit fiddly and you take your water brush and just blend that blue up back towards the head okay so now we've painted the head I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to paint the scales in the body now there is uh, lots of different ways to do it we're going to be doing it in a pretty specific way in this case Basically, you're going to do a solid blue over the top of your dark gray that we did next to that black. Next to it, you're going to do solid blue uh, by itself. Then you're going to add a little bit of our water to the blue to dilute it and do the next row. Add more water to dilute it even more, do the next row, and you're going to progressively get to a lighter and lighter blue as you move down the body. So I'm going to start by painting over the top of my grays using the blue and then we'll get to the next part. Just make sure for every single scale that you do, you leave that little white border around each scale. Okay, so as you can see here, I've done those two dark gray rows with a blue over the top of them, and then I've done a plain phthalo blue on the row that is next to those two rows. So what this does is it actually darkens our phthalo blue, so that grey that's underneath, we overlay this uh, colour which is slightly transparent and once it dries it actually darkens and it makes these rows look even brighter because they are already a very dark colour. So by doing that grey row first and the uh, phthalo blue over the top of it, it actually looks a little bit darker. So we're going to do the row coming down from there now and basically we'll keep stacking that down. So I'll just show you an example. We're going to take our water and our phthalo blue here. 
and we're going to dilute it a little bit. So we're just going to add some drops of water in there and dilute the color a little bit. And this will give us a little bit lighter of a blue once we put it down. So now in painting this row next to what we just did, we do the exact same method. We take our blue on our brush, on our ink brush, and we basically just paint next to it. And it's gonna be a little bit more fluid and difficult to work with because it's full of water. But once it dries, it actually leaves us with a lighter blue than what we did above it. Just like that. And we're gonna do that for this entire row on this side and also the row that follows along here, behind the dorsal fin, and down to the tail. And we're gonna do both of those, those rows entirely in this light blue color. Now, one thing I did wanna point out while doing this is that doing the scales in this manner by leaving that white border and painting each scale individually, as opposed to doing a wash of the entire painting, it is far, far more time consuming than doing it some other ways. That having been said, in my opinion, it gives the most traditional looking result because this is how traditionally they would be painted for tattooing. Uh, but also, it to me, it looks the best. It looks hand painted and it looks like there's a lot of work that's gone into it, which there, you know, there has. And even though it is time consuming, there's a certain meditation to painting scales. So you just go through paint each scale individually and you know focus on each scale what you're doing at that particular time and there's a little bit of a meditative aspect so it may be time consuming but I really enjoy it I actually find it quite therapeutic to just sit back and paint scales it's quite a bit of fun I don't focus too much on you know when I'm gonna finish or something like that you just go through and enjoy the process so as you can see, I've gone down the next rows and added a lighter blue to it. So, so far we've got black in the center row, gray with phthalo blue over the top of it in the row next to it, plain phthalo blue, and slightly diluted phthalo blue. So for the next row, we're basically gonna take more water, dilute our phthalo blue a little bit more so that it's even lighter and even more transparent. And we're basically gonna do the row next to it on both sides of the fish. And one other thing I wanted to talk about while doing this is that if you don't have the supplies that I've got, I've said many times now that you can use whatever you've got and you may not be sure how to do this. So if you're using pencils, colored pencils, you can basically use a lighter blue pencil on the way down and you know, like gradually get lighter and lighter. If you haven't got a great variety of light uh, of colors with your pencils, you can play around with some color blending, maybe do a little bit of gray underneath your blues. Might look a little bit muddy, but you know, that's okay as well, as long as it sort of all comes together. And I think consistency is key too. Like, you know, if it looks a little bit muddy, that's sort of okay if the rest of the image has that sort of muddy tone to it. So if, if the whole picture sort of consistently uh, ties together, then that sort of works. Um, so if you're using colored pencils, if you're using um, Copic markers, then you're very well sort of privileged in the sense that you have um, you have pretty much gradients of colors. So you can buy a blue, a lighter blue, a lighter blue than that, and just keep going down the colors and keep painting them or, or drawing them, them the scales in using your alcohol markers. So you're a little bit privileged in that sense. And you can also use a colorless blender like a watercolor brush and dilute those colors on your page even more. So if you're using alcohol markers, that would sort of be the way to do it. And if you're using the Ecoline pens like we normally do, I would recommend doing your first row in the plain Ecoline pen. And then if you watch some of my previous videos, I talk about a paper palette. Basically have a sheet of paper with you that you can blend on and lay down a really nice thick layer of the Ecoline marker and mix some water into it on the page. And you're basically gonna use that page as a makeshift palette to pick color up from using your water brush. And then you can lay down progressively lighter colors using that palette. All right, so as you can see, we're getting this really beautiful gradient look from the center outwards on the fish. We're gonna add just a little bit more water to our blue 
and dilute it so when we put it on the page it's you know it's almost white it's a very very light blue and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the next two rows down Okay, so at this point we've used all the blue we're going to use for the scales and the head and we're going to use the last little bit of blue that we need uh, to do the spines on the fish prior to switching colors. Now the reason we do this is just to keep things consistent, keep them clean and sort of not muddy up colors too much. So I'm just going to add a couple of drops of the plain blue back to our palette here. I actually don't want to go too dark, I kind of want to hit that second tone that we did. And we're going to take our brush and basically paint the spines of the fish. So this includes all the spines on the dorsal fin, the two tail spines, and the spines that are on the main fins there. So essentially, you're going to take your water brush, uh, sorry, your ink brush, dip it into your sort of the new ink that we just made up, and just start laying it down. And you should get that sort of mid-tone. You know, play around with blending and uh, sort of diluting your colors. See what sort of tones you can get. You know, figure out how many drops of water you need to add to the inks to get a certain tone. And this way, when you paint, you've, you've actually got a pretty rough but good idea of how much water to add each time and you can eyeball it. This sort of avoids the need for swatching. So sometimes I will swatch my colors um, you know, prior to putting them on a painting, especially if it is going to be like a big portfolio piece or something that I don't want to mess up. But that having been said, I've used these colors a lot in my painting. And so I've got a pretty good idea of how much water I need to add to the colors each time to get, you know, the consistency in the tone that I'm after. So we're going to go ahead and just paint all of the spines in this sort of mid blue tone. Okay, so we're now ready to switch over colors. Basically what we're gonna do for this is take your, your ink brush. Okay, we're now ready to switch over to another color. So we're gonna take our ink brush and just wash that out in our water. I just tap the bottom of the glass. These inks wash out of the brushes really easily unless you let them dry, in which case they're very difficult to wash. So wash them while they're still wet and they actually wash up quite nicely. The next color we're going to use is our orange yellow tone. And I'm actually going to fill a couple of ink wells with this. So we're going to do uh, two drops in there and just the one drop in here. And that is because one of these is going to be a light diluted tone. And I kind of want to be a little bit more careful with my orange yellow tones here. I'm also going to take some pyrrole red. And we're going to do a drop of that in our palette as well. We are going to be mixing some white with our red shortly to get a, a sort of pinkish tone uh, for a couple of parts. But we're just going to start with this. Now basically what we're going to do is yellow from the innermost point of all the fins out to an orange sort of tone on the outside area of the fins. So I'll give you an example. So I think the best area for me to give you an example of this would be the small fin at the back here. So what we're gonna do is take a very, very small amount of our red and get a bit of yellow on there as well. Mix them together to make a bit of an orange color. Now we're gonna come in just with our ink brush and apply that orange color to the outside of our fin like this. Next, we're going to take the sort of plain yellow tone and blend that through. So we create a gradient from an orange to a lighter sort of yellow orange. And then just take your blending brush and blend that yellow as close to a white as you can get it as we get closer to the bottom of the fin. Okay, so that's basically how we're going to go ahead and do all of the fins. And I think it has a really, really beautiful contrast with the blue. Blue and orange are complementary colors, so they work well together. But we have that nice fade from an orange down to the sort of really bright sort of white yellow sort of color. Uh, I have just refilled my rinse cup 
and that is because the blue ink that was still in the water was interacting with my yellow and giving it a slight green tinge. And hey, that can look really cool as well. So that's a bit of a style preference, but in this case, I kind of want to do orange to white gradient. So we're going to go ahead and do all of the fins in the same manner. Okay, so as you can see, I've done all of the fins in that manner. We've just done a dark orange, or maybe it's a light orange, and blended that through to our yellow orange, through to a yellow, and into white. And this gives it a really vibrant, sort of radiating look to it, because we have those light tones that sort of spreads out like this. And I think it's a really beautiful way to approach an artwork like this. So what we're gonna do now is the bottom scales of the body, just that last couple of sort of rows there. We're just gonna take our water, and dilute our yellow a little bit. So we're just diluting our yellow color. And we're gonna do some of those bottom few scales, a very, very light yellow wash. So taking a little bit of that water mixed with the yellow that we've got there. And we're gonna do those rows, a nice light yellow tone like this. And this light yellow that we've done on the bottom is the perfect transition from the blue into a light yellow into a white and the white would be the belly or the underside of the koi fish. So there is a little bit left to go but we're nearly there. What we're going to do is take the red that we put into our palette over here and we're going to add a slight amount of water to it. And I'm also going to add a little drop of white as well. Just one drop should do it for now. And this will give us a nice pinkish tone. But it's also got that little bit of water in there just to dilute it. So what are we using this pink tone for? Well, to begin with, we're gonna use it just to paint that little area behind the eye, that little loop behind the eye there. And we're also going to be using it to paint our gills. So we're just going to go ahead and take our pink. Might actually turn the page a little bit to make things easier. We'll take our pink and basically come down to the bottom here. And add our pink color all the way around. Now you want to be careful not to go over your, white, uh, your lines too much when you're using white. It is more of an opaque color. Take our blending brush and just gently blend that pink out till it is transparent. Now another place you might want to use a little bit of pink is in the lip at the front. So you just put a little bit of pink in the center of the lip. Take a bit of water blending and just gently blend that pink out a little bit. Now I highly recommend not going overboard with this part. If you want to put a little bit of pink tone in the front of the lip, that's okay. I think it looks really cool actually, but just don't go overboard on that particular part. Okay, so we're up to painting the lotus and lotus petals. I actually want to do the same sort of pink tone for the flower. We're going to do the inside of the flower first because we're going to keep using this light sort of pink for that. The outside of the petals, I want to do them a little bit darker, so we're going to add some more red very shortly. So to do this, we're going to do a very similar technique to what we did on the fins darkest sort of pink tone on the outside and blend it towards the center. Again, this gives it that really vibrant sort of light emanating look and I think it looks really good. Okay, so to give you this example, we're going to take a little bit of our pink and just paint in the top of our petal here. And then we take our water brush or our blending brush and we're gonna blend that all the way down till it reaches white. So as you can see, I've painted all of our petals in the same manner. Basically a dark pink faded to a white going inward towards the center of the flower or the bottom of the petals where they connect. So to do the outside of the flower, I'm gonna take a little bit of this uh, dioxine purple, and I'm gonna add a drop of that to our pink that we made. 
And I'm not 100% sure on this. I actually haven't mixed this particular color before. And I do think it's going to be a little bit too purple. So to counter that, I'm going to add some more red to it. We'll add some more drops of red to it. What I'm after is a sort of a magenta, magenta sort of color. All right, so we've pretty much mixed the color that we needed. So I added a little bit of purple to our pink and added a little bit more red and another drop of white. And so I've sort of got roughly the color that I sort of was aiming for. And we're gonna go ahead and use that for the outside of the petals. Now in this particular case, when using this color, we are going to leave a white border around the petals. And this is pretty reminiscent of when I did my um, peony rose video we're basically going to color in the inside of the petals and make sure we're leaving a white border all the way around and if you want to get a little bit fancy take your water brush and actually blend that color down a little bit so we're going to have like the harshest color towards the tip of the petal and we're going to blend that down a little bit, but you still have to leave your white borders there. Well, you don't have to, I shouldn't say that. Uh, you should leave your white borders there, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and do the outside of the petals in this manner. Okay, so we are basically at our last set of colors. We've done the flower the outside of the flower and our fish. We're basically going to take our sap green and do the stem and the middle of the flower there. And we are gonna mix a little bit of yellow in with our green, but I'm gonna do that on our palette. So just take a little bit of your sap green. We're not gonna need a lot. There's sort of not much greenery happening in here. And we're going to take a bit of our yellow and mix that in with our green. just until we get the tone that we're after. That should be about right there. And with our green, we're gonna do a very similar method. Solid green at the top, blending downwards. The only thing is we want to have those borders, the white borders on both sides of our green. So you've gotta just be careful not to touch the edges of your stem here. We'll go solid green like this. Take our blending brush and just blend it down. For the center of our flower, we're going to pretty much do our green tone for all of the sides here. Just wherever you've uh, laid down a little bit of the gray, go in with the green and take your water brush and just blend it out a little bit. Leaving a little bit of that white sort of showing through some of the highlights and don't stress too much about perfection at this stage For the inner holes of our lotus pod you're going to do solid green nice and dark so just coloring over the top of the gray that we did in those holes now the only thing you do want to do is make sure you let those little bits of green that we just did completely dry so the green that's on the inside of those holes let them dry completely because we're just going to do a plain wash over the top of them so we'll let those dry for a moment okay once those are dry to the touch we're going to take our green again and this is where it's really easy finishing off on this one we're just going to do green on the leftmost edge of this or whatever edge you desire and then take your water brush and blend that right across. Leaving a little bit of white at the edge there just as a highlight. And it's a really simple way to do the pod of our lotus. Okay guys, one last thing that I forgot to mention is you wanna color your stamens in and I'm going to do those in an orangey yellow color. So we're just gonna take a little bit of our orange yellow that had a little bit of red left over in it and color our stamens in that color. We've only done a few little ones, so it's not a big deal to go in and add those in at the end. And that's pretty much it, guys. Basically, the last thing you've got to do is make sure you sign your artwork. Always sign and date your artwork, unless it's just a sketch. 
This way you know when you did it and you can stick this in your portfolio as a beautiful koi fish painting. That is it guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I think our koi fish painting came out absolutely beautiful. I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed the process in learning how to draw this one. And I hope you follow through with the tutorial and show me all your beautiful skills. If you want to see your artwork featured on my channel, head over to Facebook at Daggett Designs, flick me a direct message with a picture of your artwork. I'd really like to see how you guys went with this koi fish artwork. Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below what you'd like to see in the next series of tutorials. And let me know if you like this format. I'm really unsure whether you guys prefer the single sort of subject matter format of tutorial, or if you like these week by week lessons on creating a piece of art from start to finish. Okay guys, if you enjoyed my video, please leave a like. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you are new to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos when they come out. Anyways, enjoy painting guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.